Hello? We're here, so it's not as awkward. Heck yeah. All right. <clears throat> it was super awkward. It was super awkward. I was getting upset. <laughs> yeah, just talking to yourself. Yo, so can you, you see the record thing? Can you record as well, just in case, you know, I don't know, just for backup? So I guess for those people who are listening to this, they, they might not know who you are. Um, okay. Just as, you know, most people who listen to this barely know who I am. So I guess I just wanted to give, start with like a little bit of background about you and your your creativity so like i don't even know if you and i have talked about this personally so like when how old were you when you started i guess playing music or more specifically writing songs yeah um so i guess i i picked up guitar because kind of by accident so my guitar teacher back home had this waiting list because he was this kind of hippie um guy that just kind of sat around and finger picked it was almost like i was you know gonna be geared up to be like the you know a professional campfire kind of guitar player okay um so my sister was on the waiting list and you know the waiting list was like a couple years or something and um then she like they were like okay well you know you need to play something so she took violin lessons you know hated it and ended up not really doing it and then the guitar teacher called and he was like, Hey, you know, next, you're the next spot in line. And, um, my mom was like, okay, well, you know, Hayden, I guess you can, you can start playing. And so I took those lessons and hated it, honestly, because it was, you know, Mary had a little lamb. It was, you know, row, row, row your boat. Cause I mean, I was six or seven. So, I mean, I understand that I couldn't, you know, dive into the Beatles or whatever right then, yeah, let alone yeah. even know what they were saying. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yes, yeah, so I did that. And the first couple of years I hated it. And then it kind of, oop, I'm bumping into things. Um, it kind of started to grow on me where I was like, oh, okay, yeah, now I'm learning the Beatles songs. And, yeah. um, I guess it was, it was always, uh, you know, I would, I guess on car rides and stuff, my mom would put on Elvis Costello and, um, yeah. squeeze and the Velvet Underground, so she had a pretty good taste, and Wilco, so that's, I guess, yeah, one of our uh, drawing points there, but, um, I but just, yeah. Real, real quick, was that guy who was teaching you guitar, was he like a, you said it's like a two-year waiting list is a long time, was he like a name, was he like a guy, like a, a, was he known? Yeah, he was known locally because everyone, you know, the University of Tennessee is in town, and so everyone's, you know, crazy about the traffic cone of orange, Oh and, yeah, yeah. Um, so and he used to be like a star, like five star recruit, um, wide receiver back in the seventies. Oh wow, okay. And um, he uh, got offers to Alabama and all those kind of big things with um, his name Bear Bryant or whatever that had that houndstooth like cap and stuff. Oh, okay. So he's part of that era um, of you know really good football. And he, you know, ended up tearing up his knee and shoulder and getting like red shirted and then just kind of started smoking pot and, yeah, you know, taking his canoe down the river and just started picking up guitar and his mom did voice lessons. So he just kind of put them together. So that's how it was like, you know, the recitals were like, okay, you're expected to sing, you know, you're going to play, you know, a song that you want to play. And wow. um, so it was, yeah, it was cool because. I guess it was, it helped me realize that the guitar is like the accompanying instrument. So, so you, st- always- so you always, from the get go, you were singing and playing. It wasn't just yeah. scales. Wow. So that's super different. Wow. So that's interesting. Yeah, it was, it was different. And, and honestly, I kind of, you know, it got to a certain point where I was like, okay, well, can I learn, um, you know how to play scales and he's like oh I don't, I don't really know how to do that you know i just kind of wow. sit and play which i mean i respected but i mean obviously you know you get to berkeley where we met and it was like what the hell is this you know like why is there you know a, a four like a s4 or whatever and why can't we play it and why do we have to kind of you know, skip around and there's all these unwritten rules and i was just like i, I have no idea what these numbers mean yeah um, i i was in the same boat i was i mean did you start in the first level of theory as well? Like oh, right yeah. I was, I was way down at the bottom of the totem pole. Yeah, me too. I had no idea 
what the hell any of that stuff was because I learned in a similar way. I, I didn't, I took some guitar lessons, but I was singing and playing my own music. So it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't like I was sitting there learning scales and I mean a little bit, but I mean, I only knew one scale until I got to Berkeley. <laughs> it's yeah. like, you know, yeah. Um, so you did the lessons with, with this guy. What's his, do you have, do you remember his name? Yeah. His, yeah. Chip, Chip Howard, which is a, I like the name Chip. Chip Howard. That's a old school name. Damn. Yeah. And um, so he's uh, and he it, it, like at a certain point though, like I'd say like pretty much starting high school is like, I kind of, caught up to him a little bit just in the sense that it was like he'd give me a song and then like the next week he'd be like another song and I was just able to just knock him out um and what kind of stuff was it um it would be like kind of the um like all the finger picking kind of 70s stuff so you'd get like Jim Croce James Taylor yeah um John Denver um and you know some of the Beatles kind of stuff um it was more finger picky um that's awesome. And uh, yeah, and then some like Dan Fogelberg, so like some kind of the little bit of the country stuff as well, but more poppy, folky kind of country. Yeah. Um, and what and was was what you were listening to back then kind of in line with that, or were you listening to other stuff like other like more contemporary music instead of seventies music? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was super into surf rock back then and even some of the kind of the modern surf rock and you know those guys are all canceled now as they should be um the, the burger records people yeah yeah I was I was part of like I was I was into that I have a shirt yeah. somewhere that I gotta I gotta burn in the front yard but, <laughs> um, yes I mean I was into that just because it was it felt like real and trashy um and yeah. the same with that I think it was kind of the velvet underground kind of push that envelope for me just because it was like oh this is this is weird and kind of grating and like yeah powerful and um so it wasn't as like pretty and melodic which is kind of you know nice yeah. so did you so so you're listening to surf rock you're learning i mean that's a pretty different spread of music there you know i mean that's like you said melodic and then pretty grating and aggressive did you have a band yeah, so I had um, a couple bands through high school, and I guess I had one in like seventh through eighth grade. And you know, you're doing the classic like Red Hot Chili Peppers at the oh yeah seventh grade talent show, and yeah. Um, so yes, I mean, I was I was in a couple bands, and then I guess it really kind of in late middle school I got into the like into like a little bluegrass kind of. I wouldn't say bluegrass because it wasn't as like sophisticated or intense it was just kind of more like jug man kind of just like that's skiffle, cool. skiffle if you want to call it that um yeah i'll call it that and, skiffle damn um i mean i don't know any kids who listen i mean this is probably why we're friends because it's like you know no one was listening to skiffle i mean skiffle's interesting yeah you know? I'm not saying that but it's i mean it was it was we were just kids so it was like we really didn't know how to play banjo and so it was like okay so we're you know, we'll just kind of cover, um, you know, some, yeah, we, I mean, honestly, we were doing like Avid Brothers stuff, which is kind of cringe a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan, but I mean, uh, we, yeah. you're still playing, you know, folky music at that age, what, 15, 16, you know, you're, yeah, you're still, you had like a, it, it's interesting because I mean, you talk to some people and they listen to like one thing and that's what they listen to you know, and that's what they went to. Like we met people at Berkeley. It's like, I play jazz. I only play jazz. If you don't like jazz, you know, go to hell. <laughs> like, so yeah, it's, yeah. In, it's interesting that you're coming from at this. And I think it's more uh, a songwriter thing that they, and maybe singer songwriter thing that we like all kinds of stuff because we just kind of like songs. We not really like yeah. the, the style can change, you know? Yeah. It can have and flow. But that brings me to the, um, the tip of canoe record um which i played a few songs on that's sort of how we met i don't actually re well, i kind of remember where we met did we meet it well that was when i was doing my own thing but there was a show yeah, <laughs> there yeah. was a sh i played a show at at berkeley at the red room and i guess hayden was in the crowd i think i remember seeing hayden with our friend alberto and it was a weird show because 
we were still kind of a loud rock band at that time, like a really loud rock band, pretty, you know, I was being sort of a whack job on stage and uh, all the other bands on the bill were like neo soul bands and like R and B bands, which is what Berkeley does. Basically they're, they're an R and B. What's that? You had a, sorry to interrupt, but you had a, you had like a trampoline act, didn't you? There was a trampoline act. <laughs> A kid opened the show with a ukulele and a trampoline. I mean, it's like, how am I going to compete with this? You know, I don't have any, you know, tricks. He's got a trick. Yeah, so then so then we, uh, I tried to meet you after the show because I was like, wow, this guy, you know, this guy, you know, has something that I'm into for once. It's not, you know, the, um, yeah, the classic. Yeah. Yeah, just like the. <laughs> Fill a beat with uh, just like farting around on the piano. It's like, okay, where's the where's the music? Um, uh huh. But uh, yeah, no offense. I mean, it's just not my cup of tea. Um, well, and and, and, and I, there is that there is that weird thing at Berkeley when you do meet someone who does something that isn't that that you like. You're like, holy shit! Where yeah, have you I'm, where have you been? You know. Yeah, you cling to them because then the whole. I mean, your whole freshman year, you're just kind of struggling with depression. On like, is is there anything? you know, out there that kind of resembles the fact that I don't know how to do music at all. And I don't right. really, and I only need like three chords or whatever. Um, so, I mean, it was, yeah, it was quite refreshing. And I was, you know, excited to meet you after the show and, uh, you know, you're doing your own thing. You left to go to a bar. <laughs> yeah. I, I had to get out of there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, yeah. but looking back, that's like such a, you know, angsty thing to do. It's like, I just got to go get a drink. I guess stupid, but I should have hung out. <laughs> it's just so it's, uh it's, you gotta do it i mean it's just a different different crowd you know sometimes you just gotta leave elvis has left the building you know elvis has left the building i mean yeah the applause was scattered it was an awkward night i mean it was a ton of fun looking back because i'm glad i'm glad we were that band at the school you know because mm -hmm. like we some people knew who we were we weren't like the most popular band in the world but you know i appreciated that you know we could be that odd man out group on a bill and it's a sort of like, it was some people in the middle of the night, like, what the hell are these guys doing? It's not like we were, we were a good band. We were like professional and we were tight. So it's not like it was like, this is bad. It's just like, I don't get what these guys are doing. But I want to talk to you about the Tip of Canoe Records. So like, you know, we became friends, we began to talk, but you had kind of already had, I think a lot of that record written, right? By that point. And I joined the band and like pretty much all those songs were there that ended up on the Tip of Canoe album, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, no, there were, I think there were a couple that kind of maybe developed a little bit when you were there. Um, okay. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, definitely couldn't have done it without you. Honestly, you had a good feel. Everyone else, um, you know, was a solid bass player, but it was sometimes it was like, all right, you know, it's kind of one five, just kind of keep it simple in the lines. Right. Um, and we, you know, had two kind of punk drummers. So they were just like very like, all right, let's go. Let's fucking do this. Right. Which yeah. is cool, you know, but it was just also like when it was like you're hitting a somber song and and it was just it was sometimes got a little bit much. But I still I still love both of those guys. I talked to them a decent bit. And listening to that record, it's still a really interesting record because it's sort of alternative country, but it's also um kind of honky tonk at times and then you know our friend alberto is really into you know avant-garde jazz and so he brings all these kind of interesting guitar lines to it and then there there's also this element on the record of like uh musical theater almost and i've told you i've complimented you about this before and i think some people might get offended if you're like yeah well this reminds me of musical theater but you actually when i told you that you're like i was going for that you were going for this kind of theatrical thing and i think it works because it's easy to make that cheesy but i don't think it is at all like I, and I encourage people go on spotify listen to the tip of canoe record listen to ma i'm not i mean that's a a very theatrical song but it rocks and it's it's you know heavy emotionally it's you know it's good stuff i mean can you talk about what you were going for in that or did that just kind of happen like yeah um i i was definitely caught up in the the theatrical aspect of it because i mean it was you um i mean like our first ever show that we did we borrowed a projector and we had um like a we we're kind of all wearing the white you know with the little kind of bolo oh, the, top. oh yeah the cow yeah cowboy outfit kind of thing 
Um, and so we had a projector that had visuals and like, you know, kind of old Western movies that would shoot up on us. And it was, you know, worked with the white um, T-shirts and or the white uh, button downs. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that was very much like part of the aesthetic and we wanted it to be kind of um, haunting and uh, yeah, kind of spooky where people are like, oh, what it, you know, so in a way it was not this kind of um like what you see is what you get it was kind of more like oh, okay like what is uh you know what are they saying you know why is this kind of why am i on the edge like what's and so i mean i think it was that was yeah. the theatrical aspect we were um going for definitely that's um, awesome because i mean it's too you know we had to we had to wear the suits i mean it was just kind of we wanted wanted it to be some kind of performance bigger than you know the little dinky basement we were in I, I think that's great because I think a lot of people our age, it's 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 sort of the Nirvana or the grunge intention where it's like I'm going to show up in my jeans and my flannel shirt or whatever, and that's enough for a performance. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to perform and put the minimal amount of effort into the presentation, or that is my presentation. Is that I don't give a shit. So like when I met, and I've I've never been into that. I always wore like a suit jacket when I played a show. I always tried to dress up. I encouraged the band to dress up. So like when I met you and the guys, I, and I saw you guys in these outfits, I was like, well, they're taking this seriously and they're trying to communicate some something else other than we're just a country influenced band. And you didn't just play straight ahead country music. It was like, we're wearing the sort of traditional outfits, but we're playing this more jarring, aggressive country music. And it's like, this is interesting. This is like, you're playing with aesthetic, you're playing with expectations. And that's something I always appreciate about what you did. And that's, you know, you should have, people should absolutely listen to the record on Spotify or wherever you get your music. Thank you. I, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, we were definitely, and I think Alberto added to the, um, you know, I mean, Jacob as well. I mean, everyone yeah. added to the, you know, the flavors because it was, you get this kind of, it's almost um, film scorey with like some of the kind of effects that Alberta would add that kind of, you know, emulate, you know, hallways and like, you know, kind of like jail cell, kind of like creepy, gritty Absolutely. Um, stuff. And same with Jacob, kind of the haunting, the weird, spooky, like whispery, like synths and, um, Ian would get pretty chimey and stuff, which was, you know, nice and it added to this kind of ambience that we were um, creating. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I mean, it was it was definitely enjoyable and it was enjoyable to make the record. Um, I, but, uh, yeah, I mean. I so guess you'd so you'd say that you and Ian and uh, Alberto and Jacob, you guys all kind of arranged those songs together. And you but did you have a vision of what you wanted or did you just kind of let them do what they wanted to do? Uh, I mean, a lot of it, yeah, developed through them. Um, yeah. Like uh, Life Without Parole. I mean, there was the idea for melody and I wanted, you know, the chorus to be kind of big. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, really it was, it was a lot of them and Nat as well, like that um, lick, uh, lick on Life Without Parole on the saxophone that Jacob played was kind of, you know, done by um, Nat and by accident, really, because it was, uh, you know, for those who don't know, Nat recorded our uh, record and is yeah. the drummer in Red Mill. Nat, uh, Pier Nat Pierce of the uh, Real Room Recording Lab. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, yeah, up in Merrimack. So, yeah, so those were good times. And, I mean, we were, it's probably like three in the morning. We were exhausted, and Jacob was just pretty much the only one awake. Alberto and I were kind of going crazy laughing in the corner. <laughs> That's what you do up there. You go nuts. For, just for some context, that recording studio, it's just a big, empty, it's an old movie. It's actually an old movie theater. It's an old VFW hall. And so there's no windows in the place. So it's just this big black room with a stage and that makes these wild records in there. So you, you just end up going nuts in the corner at three in the morning. <laughs> so. Yeah. And I mean, they're above this uh, a Chinese restaurant. So it's you, there's yeah. like a certain where they you can record and so you're kind of limited to those confines and you come down there and everyone's like oh you're you're part of the thing upstairs oh my god you know we have problems <laughs> all the time um and then you just eat some like shitty like um like sweet Terrible. and sour chicken and you're just like 
you know adds to the aesthetic of just kind of going up there and feeling like shit and you know pouring your heart into this thing so yeah so jacob did that saxophone part the it's a um it's not quite that but oh yeah that's nice. that one lick he does there at the end um yeah and I was, I mean, I was pretty much in that, and Jacob, Jacob was just kind of, you know, messing around and hit that, and we we're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, they, I mean, they, they pretty much did. And I know uh, Jacob, you know, really helped with the writing. Like, what if we did this, or what if you went into this, or, um, so I mean, I think Jacob, yeah, Jacob's really talented in that regard. He's got a good ear. How have you been kind of? I know you just moved to Nashville from Knoxville. You know, that's a big life life move. You yeah, know, how, yeah. how do you feel even back when we were writing during the beginning of quarantine, how do you feel about writing in a time like this? Do you feel pressure to write because you have a bunch of time or are you just kind of like whatever happens, happens. If I write a bunch, I write a bunch. If I don't write, whatever, you know, where are you at with that stuff? Yeah. I mean, I think it ebbs and flows. Um, I find, yeah, at the beginning, it was, it was all kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm in, I'm in, you know, on, you know, I'm finishing some classes, I don't got anything to worry about, you know, I'm just gonna pick up my guitar, and, you know, get through the day of classes, and, you know, you always have your guitar next to you in classes, and so, I mean, you could just kind of doodle around. Yeah. Um, but then it was kind of this, like, okay, shit, well, school's done, and, um, you know, I gotta find a job, I gotta move, um, you know, I started working for my dad for a little bit and then, um, now Home Depot, which, you know, kind of blows. Um, right. But, uh, some, I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely like my attitude then versus my attitude now, um, has changed. And so it's, it would, it's definitely harder now than it was at the beginning of all this. Cause you're like, Oh, like, yeah, it's kind of fun. It's like, you know, you get the summer thing and you kind of get to, yeah. run around and wake up late and you know kind of do your own thing and then it was like okay well i actually gotta you know like i just graduated college i gotta like pay for rent i gotta you know um you know start kind of thinking about what i want to do with my life you know when it was kind of before then it was like uh oh, you know i don't really you know care like i could i could do this or that or whatever yeah. and now yeah now there's this kind of pressure and so it's it kind of pushed the songwriting um, to the back burner. Um, yeah. So you, so you, it sounds like, so you thrived more with free, a certain amount of free time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was also, I mean, like I have a decent bit of free time now, like I've got, you know, today and tomorrow off, Yeah. but it's, um, it's hard when you think like, okay, well now this, this is my schedule. So this is, this is what I'm going to, you know, write. This, this is kind of, cause it, you know, cause in your, forcing ideas or you're you know worrying about like okay well you know it's five o'clock i can start drinking you kind of start you know managing your time more when back then it was you know like when i was still in school like finishing cyber i'm saying back then like it was like you know back in the 70s <laughs> um, back in the day in, yeah uh, i mean it feels it feels like that i mean it's been it's been a long ass time and i mean now we're like done with summer i mean yeah well, but i mean we're coming not totally back. Totally. Yeah. I like fall better anyways. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I mean, it was, so yeah, so the attitudes changed, but I did, uh, I started and, you know, hopefully you, you know, you moved down here, but I did kind of, um, I sent you that seed the other day. I hear star. I know. The we'll cut this out. Star! <laughs> cut the shit, will you? Where are you? She's bad, man. All right, she stopped. So yeah, uh, I thought the male cats were the ones that were like howling, you know. She is well. I mean, it's Siamese in general. I guess I don't know. I guess male cats yell, but I mean, this is this is just what they do. They just talk. So yeah, they talk and talk. Yeah, it's you can't it's keep nuts. them quiet. You can't. Yeah. No matter no matter what you do. So anyway, so you you're talking about you know moving to Nashville, right? And so you've moved to Nashville. I'm looking yeah. at your new studio space. I mean, it looks great. Yeah. You just got a piano. I mean, you, tell me about the piano. You got a fully functioning piano for free. All you had to do was move it. Is that the deal? Yeah. So, um, 
obviously a lot of Nashville people know this, but um, you know, bird finds on Instagram is this like page where this guy's posting like all this you know shit around town like oh there's a you know 1970s like silver tone guitar or, like 19 you know 60s kind of like neve preamp or whatever and he's just posting all this stuff like for people or like he's like maybe on commission or something or you know uh or just kind of like hunting facebook marketplace and being like oh this guy has you know piano over here in lachlan springs which i live you know like in Lachlan Springs, essentially. Um, so I like messaged him and he was like, all right, here's the link on Facebook. Like you can go get it. And, um, so yeah, so I got the, uh, the piano and we put it in, um, the back of my uncle's Jeep. He has like one of these kind of like weird flat, um, little, uh, hitches or whatever that just kind of goes into the back and, strapped it in and it was bouncing and people were like looking at us, you know, all the, you know, the hipster East Nashville people were like pointing and laughing like, ha he's got a piano on his, on his Jeep. What an idiot. <laughs> um, but, uh, and they're and we're, like waving like, Oh my gosh. Like, you know, walking around with their Starbucks cups or whatever. And you're just like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. So this is, these are my neighbors. Um, yeah, mocking you for, yeah. Mocking for getting a piano. Free piano. Yeah. <laughs> Like get a grip. You guys didn't find it. <laughs> um, but I, uh, yeah, I, so, so I went there and I told the guy, I was like, yeah, you know, I saw this uh, posted on, you know, bird finds Instagram. He's like, what's that? So I guess this bird finds guy goes and like, will hunt for you. So, I mean, he's, I mean, this guy's, this guy's great. I mean, yeah. Like, what the hell? That's like a public service. Down. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I went there, got this piano and he actually gave me, um, He's like, oh, you know, it's kind of the Nashville thing. It's like if you don't want the gear and it's just kind of really not worth much or, you know, you just have no use for it, you just kind of pass it on. Um, That's amazing. I mean, think about musicians who are listening to this. Think about that. That is like, that's community. That's fantastic. It is. So he's like, yeah, you know, I got this from someone else. So he gave me like one of those like really nice, like double keyboard stands, you know. And those oh, those are, are, you know, it can be, a hundred, I mean, I don't have keyboards yet so um right. so now it's taking up space so if someone else is listening to this in the greater nashville area you know feel free to take it because he said if i yeah. posted it on facebook and like sold it you know he'd be pissed um which i understand <laughs> you know you gotta share the love right um, yeah but yeah so, so i mean a lot of it yeah you know a lot of it's just from what i hear you know everyone's well connected and they're always playing at the same venues and it's like oh we'll just pass it on that's fantastic. Um, I love that. Yeah. Especially yeah. coming from a place like Berkeley, which was very territorial and clicky, you know, it's like just, you don't even know this guy and he's willing to give you a hand. I mean, that's a, yeah, yeah. that makes a big difference, you know, that's really cool, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and I, yeah, I think there is definitely that kind of community here where it's just like, Oh, I've got you know too much shit in my house and it's taking up space. And so we're just kind of passing One second. on. Um, stars shouting back there holy shit <laughs> shut up star shut up i love you to pieces you know that but you're 15 years old and i'm trying to yeah i'm working this is what i get dude this is what i get i'm working in this we, i live in this huge ass basement anyway it's just a fucking shit show over here but yeah i mean the only thing that's holding me back from moving to nashville is money and the brown recluse i'll tell you that much you know yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean my mom my so my mom lives down here too and she uh back to the spider talk and she was talking to this guy who was you know working on you know her back porch like kind of contractory guy and he was just saying like oh yeah you know we we, we find you know me and my wife find brown recluse spiders in our bed and you know it's just so normal you know we just got them all over but you know we've never been bitten it's like dude what the fuck like spiders in your bed <laughs> I'm moving I'm moving to Alaska at that point. I mean, it's, you know, it's like, what the hell is that? And I mean, to never be bitten. And it's like, all, all it took was, I've never even seen it. And all it took was putting on like a pair of like pants, work pants, and I get bitten. And it's like, okay, so you get them in your bed and you don't. But I, you know, I've never seen them and I get bitten. I mean, it's like, what kind of luck is that? So, so now I'm just like timid about everything. It's like, it, it, it could literally be anywhere. It could be in my bed. 
It could be in my shower. Um, my uncle finds them in his shower. I mean, it's like, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ready for this kind of thing. Um, but, uh, yeah. And he was like, yeah, everyone in Nashville has them. And you like read articles too. And it's like, oh yeah, they're, they're just friendly. They just, they just kind of, you know, they're, they're here. And it's like, no, I don't want them here. You know, it's like, it's not, it's not cool. But yeah, yeah. just, it's just, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good time to, for me, it's been a good time to just, you know, basically do what you're doing, which is kind of like, what am, what am, what am I looking for? Like, what's, what's the, what's the goal here for yeah. the future, you know? So you think I, you'll, you'll keep the, I mean, I think you should. Red Mill's a great name. Do you think you'll keep it? Honestly, and maybe this is the, the big reveal. I've thought about putting records out under my own, own name now. Yeah. Because. There you go. Yeah, because Red Mill is a good name, but it's also the name of that that oatmeal. <laughs> yeah, I mean that could be a sponsor a sponsorship right there. <laughs> it's you know? true. It's true. And then there's like a, a few other bands named Red Mill. It's just it's been a nightmare actually since I since I named the band that there was a band in Australia named Red Mill, and they I got into like a weird message battle with them and they were just kind of like, well, you should change your name. Cause we had it first, but they don't put any, they put music out like once every five years. I'm like, I'm trying to make this my career. Like, yeah. is there any way I can like buy you out? And they're like, no, like, this is our name. It's like, all right. You know, thanks. Mm. Thanks a lot for that shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so I've thought about putting it out under my own name. Cause also to me, Red Mill is, the people I used to play with and I don't know if I'm going to play with those people anymore because of just moving and life stuff you know it's like mm -hmm. Red Red Mill is kind of like Adam Sapiro and Mario Fontes and Charlie and uh you know Jake Osborne and Cabot Metz and Nat Pierce like it's an old older crew that I just don't know when we'd be able to make music again that's Red Mill so I've really thought about moving forward sort of being a bit more about my songs and that kind of thing but yeah. we'll see we'll see and i might just keep the podcast as red mill variety hour and then that's its own kind of live on red mill in that way it's about collaboration red mill is always was always supposed to be about a collaborative thing so it's yeah. like maybe, maybe the podcast is the red mill variety hour we all get in the red mill we all talk yeah. about this thing so anyway that's my that's my identity crisis yeah i mean also i mean for one of, I mean, this is, you know, here we're getting into hot takes here, but I mean, one of the reasons, you know, I want to ditch Tippecanoe is that, you know, I, I found that, you know, though I love, you know, history and that it was, you know, it was always kind of about like, um, you know, Native American rights and kind of, you know, uh, speaking for the prisoners, kind of, you know, much like, you know, our heroes like Johnny Cash and stuff. Sure. Um, they're very into that, you know, and, yeah. and, you know, we did, you know, songs about, prison reform you know our good friend dana who was you know a, um you know a convicted um guy who was you know a returning citizen now um and we just I, you know looking back i think it's you know typical news a little insensitive just because it's you know was a battle in which you know william tyler just kind of there was you know a lot of hostility and a lot of violence toward native americans who were you know there first and so i think it was you know, maybe in my mind, it was kind of like drawing attention to, you know, these conflicts and kind of, you know, where it, yeah, where it stands. But I mean, at the same point, I think it's, um, you know, I don't want to be glorifying it in any way. So, right. Um, right. Well, it doesn't sound like your intentions were bad, but that's just, you just want to be, it sounds like you just want to be sensitive to, to that yeah yeah too i mean it's it's like the dick the dixie chicks it's like okay well you know none of them are remotely confederate none of them are remotely into that kind of thing but it's like they're from you know below the mason dixon line and they're kind of dixie you know, land proud, yeah. proud of their you know southern roots and stuff but it's uh it's you know sometimes you just got to be like all right well this is you know this is a bigger thing than it is a a band name so yeah um, Plus, I, I mean, honestly, the we sorry to interrupt. Uh, we, no, no, I, I, my I, girlfriend I, and I were driving up to Chicago, and we drove through Tippecanoe, Indiana, and um, we, uh, I mean, no offense to any residents who happen to maybe listen, um, right? 
you know. It was just the most depressing place I think I'd ever seen. It was like just gray, flat, couple trees. I mean, it was like, what the hell is this, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Nothing theatrical about that, you know? No. That's Um, so just a just a beat beat up town. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, But occasionally we'll get you know followers followers on our Instagram page from you know like I think the typical new high school band follows us. It's like weird, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, that's very weird. Well, yeah, so I mean, that's a good good goal for the future, you know. Yeah, trying to re-identify, and it's a weird time to incubate and think about all that stuff. Yeah, this will probably run out soon. So. Hayden, thanks so much for being on the show. Do you want to tell people where they can find Tipicu New Music, follow you if they want to follow your work? I, and just my own personal thing, you, everyone should check out the record. It's a great record. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if you look up Tipicu New on, um, on Spotify or Apple Music or any of those things. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, just, just be careful because you might find, I think there's a like another band called like typical new war chants or some, some shit out there. So we're not that, we're not that into it. Um, (laughs) But uh, yeah, so typical new and then um, our record is self-titled and uh, it should be, I guess me on a standing on a horse and then uh, Keegan's Keegan's mug up there as well. Yep. Um, Yeah. But uh, yeah, thanks for listening. And uh, you can find me, I guess on Instagram at, uh, Hayden Myers Smith, um, where you'll you'll maybe see some updates if I you know crawl out of my shell. Hell yeah, buddy! All right, thanks All everyone. Right, Keith, thanks so much for having me on here. Absolutely, Hayden. Thank you for listening, everyone. This has been Hayden Smith from Tip of Canoe. I'm Keegan James Blood. Tune in next week for another guest and uh, more ridiculousness. All right. Bye.